Okay, well, uh, good afternoon to everybody at AwesomeCon. This is Dugongs and Sea Dragons here at the weekly actual play with the Mission Marine conservation themed Dungeons and Dragons podcast hosted by this fine squad, and you guys are here live. We're so thankful for that. I am Josh Truman, and now that I think about it, this is probably my last time DMing for four weeks. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes, this is my ultimate DMing experience here. The ultimate DMing mm -hmm. experience. Uh, I will be DMing for you tonight, and to my right is... Hi, I'm Chris Parsons, and I play Lucy and Dark, the Tief League Warlock, and in real life, I'm a marine biologist who works for the National Science Foundation. So come and see us at uh, booth 601, find out about science. And to my right, I have my twin sister, Alaria Dark, who is Ashley. Hi, yes, I am Dr. Scarlett Smash, and I am a marine biologist too. And here we have Erin. Hi, I'm Erin. Uh, I will be playing Daharna Sultzblad, the Kelp Forge Druid, and in real life, I am an illustrator and soon-to-be published science fiction novelist. Yeah. Hello, my name is Remy. Uh, I'll be playing Bruce Dar, the, uh, and uh, in real life, I am Chris Parsons' neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I'm also a marine biologist, and I study bivalves microplastics. That's wow. so cool. All right. Well, thank you guys very much. Um, so, as I said, we only have an hour, so I'm going to dive right into it. That's it. Lucien, the lassitude of leadership. Another day when you could be having fun, and all you have are purchase orders to approve, staff meetings to schedule, shipping tables to update. Truly heavy is the head that wears the crown, or at least the tri-corner hat. Administration, I hate it. It's true. It is a bummer. The only reprieve to your dullish leadership has been your dear sister, Malaria, visiting you. Whether that is to congratulate or mock your success, however, you're not entirely sure. She's jealous of my success. <laughs> we were very competitive when we were kids. Well, we ate all of our brothers and sisters. Well, that's true. If yes. <laughs> I would have gotten over to the other uterus and bitten you, you would have died. See, you might not know this, but uh, when your ancestor is a shark demon, and you're a tiefling, your mother actually has a bifurcated uterus, like sharks, so there's two sides. So we ate our siblings, and we were the only two survivors. We couldn't get to each other. Yeah, which <laughs> explains a lot, really. But you would have died. <laughs> she is there now with, with uh, Remy. Your, what is your character's name again? I'm sorry. Who's the guy? Don't worry, it's French. <laughs> Her muscle and Compatriot. Compatriot. Yes. We put the, we put the compatriot quotation marks, but you aren't quite sure what I did. Yeah. I realize that putting air quotes on a podcast may not be the most effective. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you hear the audience again, so that's good. Uh, said, another day is looking to crawl across your desk when your assistant Finn bursts in. He is normal at his best, and there is Finn, who will be featured in our uh, kids' D&D &D show uh, next uh, tomorrow. 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 At one o'clock. Um, Finn bursts in. He's been normal. He is, Finn is normally impeccable, but today he seems out of sorts. Uh, he, he bursts in and goes, uh, Master Lucian, we have company. And then he sort of stands there embarrassed, knowing he shouldn't speak, but he's biting his lip and jumping up and down. <laughs> what is it, Finn? Do you have songs for me? Uh, uh, I, I do, but also, um, it seems like one of our corsairs, the Comparia, was, was taken off the coast and, and well, here! And, and he thrusts out a giant triton shell. Uh, the shell's about a foot and a half long, about eight inches in diameter. It's a golden reddish hue with a soft, lustrous, creamy inner lip. And you can hear the faint sound of surf emerging from it. This is probably the worst scone you have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Very crunchy. And there's no general cream on it. <laughs> what is this thing? Uh, well, it, it, it just, uh, well, li listen. So I put it to my ear. And when you take it up, you feel there's a slight shock and there's a spurt of water from the shell, which is actually kind of funny because you put it up to your ear. <laughs> <laughs> the, water, the water spurts out to form the image of a creature. The delicate swirls of blue and green mist coalesce to the shape of a portly figure with the head of a toadfish. Then the amidship ingenious porphyes for those who are in the know. 
um, and an extremely large stomach. The bottom half of the figure is obscured by flowing sea spray. The figure opens its mouth and surprisingly sonorous voice echoes forth. My dear service dwellers, thank you so much for streamlining your delivery services. I do so enjoy finding them past my little cottage. Every Tuesday and Thursday, probably for London. I do have but just one little request. Again, trifling, actually. Something that shouldn't be difficult for you at all. Perhaps we could meet to discuss. I'll just keep your boat and a cruise down the pavement to ensure your good behavior. You can find me at that darling little show you sunk your boat. Tomorrow, 11 o'clock. And with that, the image drifts away on a slight breeze and the sound of surf coming in from your office window. So, a mysterious message sits from someone who wants to meet at 11 o'clock. Do you know what this means? Doesn't I remember it? We're going. Yeah, no more paperwork! Yes! <laughs> 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 oh, that's got my new pirate coat on with the gold. And oh, let's get some real scones. Oh, well, we have a nice bakery downtown. Let's yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Oh, are you coming? Whatever your name is. Uzuka. <laughs> the, 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 the X Y seven is silent. stands a 12-foot-tall figure, 
They have a vaguely humanoid form, but with the aforementioned fish head. The bottom of the torso blends into the water spout. However, there's a hint of opulent platoon plant pantaloons. That sounds like a band name. Oh, I'm kind of wearing my most opulent pantaloons, too. Oh, that's very <laughs> jealous. I've <laughs> got my pantaloons. The rather, <laughs> trousers. And the rather yes. corpulent midsection is contained, barely, by a vest of fine orange silk with pearl and emerald buttons and fixtures. The figure is flanked by a tall, thin woman dressed in a gown of dark green, browns, and red. Friends, the woman approaches you and says, Today is a blessed day. One that you will tell your children's children. You are in the presence of the most exalted Grand Wazir, Hebrew Mostoma. And it is your great honor that he speaks to you. And with that, she backs away and stands to the left of the great creature in front of you. So, what was your name again? Giggly Stomatopod? <laughs> you know, Domarno was not paying attention to any of that. So I can't yeah. have said that's a lovely voice. Where did you get that from? <laughs> Do you think he comes in my size? I mean, oh, you are the head of Imrock's hole. You could probably hook that up. Yeah, yeah. that's a lovely way to get that. Um, the Giglimostoma, G-I-N-G-L-Y-M-O-S-T-O-N. Giglimostoma. That's the type of word that you can get. That's drink. That's after the capoeira. So you get a Giglimostoma now. If the book before me gets capoeira and I get Giglimostoma, I'm right. Yes. 
was the better option? The four was the better option. Oh, you are an amazing person. <laughs> I told you it's Carlos. Okay. Um, you, uh, you recognize that although the major Jogo has a human form, something seems off. I'm watching her. Her. I'm watching her. Poor <laughs> kids. Yeah. Uh, I'm watching me. I'm watching him. I'm watching right. him. The car is all over everything. Hey, hey they're a servant. They're invisible to us. Exactly. Um, they, uh, they urge you along. You find yourself entering the interior of, the, of a gigantic columnar coral, easily 200 feet tall. The inside bright white and carved like a tower with a spectacular inner chamber and spiraling stairs around, leading to innumerable corridors and chambers. The main audience chamber is festooned with pearls and gems adding splashes of color to the bone white walls. In the center you see the little Soma sitting the top a throne carved from the living coral of a column. The throne is a wave motif with, I uh, can never say this, like lapis lazuli. Lapis lazuli. It's like, if only I had, I think if I had dice made of them, I would be able to pronounce it. But it's not the way that it is. I mean, cracking dice does make a beautiful set. <laughs> you see that though, there's way between but this beautiful, these beautiful inlays, and, and um, despite their considerable bulk, they lean back up against the throne. And um, but although they are quote unquote, there we go for the posterity. Uh, <laughs> sitting there, the, their lower half still seems somewhat obscure. Behind and to the left, the major domo stands alert, a tablet in their hand, um, as several minor functionaries come up and. and and check with her. Um, three aquatic elves bring forth blue marble benches for you to sit on uh, a respectful distance away from the, uh, the Grand Wazir. And when you are seated, Major Domo approaches and said, The most exalted Grand Wazir, Glyndomostoma, will now hear your discourses. And you will sort of back, claps. Six seals wearing matching red vests and pantaloons scurry out <laughs> with wayward looks on the moon. They bring forth uh, small, um, softball sized hemispherical objects and place them in your lap. You can feel the weight and heft as you look down and see that the outside they appear to be enormous pearls. Yet these pearls are dissected down the middle. And with the exposed surface, the, the inner part of it, um, the hue, you see this beautiful, lustrous stratigraphy of nature, uh, polished almost to an iridescent hue. But what's truly remarkable is that in the center, the core of this pearl, are sapphires and emeralds. My precious. <laughs> <laughs> are these flowers? Yeah. 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 More of these? <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice People have a sort of reaction. They are beautiful, aren't they? You are, of course, aware how water pearls are made, no? The single bit of sand becoming trapped in an oyster, and that oyster encasing the disturbance in layer upon layer shell, trying to partition off the disturbance, locking it, if you will, in a gilded cage. But those are fine and well for the plebeians of this plane. What we, more advanced cultures, require something more refined. These are celestial pearls, and that is where you and they take their long green finger and twirl it around in that speaking again. And you can see another vision. You can see racks and racks of, uh, of oysters inestimably long, uh, clinging to inestimably long fronds of seaweed. However, unlike the oysters of this world, these are about the size of your leg, about three feet long. Um, and you can see swimming around these oysters are numerous seals in the aforementioned red vests. Um, and, and they appear to be cleaning the shells, trimming the whole fast to see me, and keeping the fishes at bay. These are my oyster farms with the engineer the pearls. Rather than a grain of sand that your world uses here, we are more discerning and indeed see them with jewels. These bespoke jewels are the envy of the court. <laughs> and you should see David Fry on the vast's envy when I show him. Oh, he thinks he's so fine in his court of his artisanally harvested kilt. Moses saw saddles, but these are sure to show him up. Uh, but I've become distracted. You care little, nor could you understand the machinations of our grand courts. And then sits up, and the swamp there slides away. It's all business now. 
I appreciate you recognizing the benefits of my little outpost here in the seas, and I do so appreciate the deliveries, but honestly, they've been a bit random. I desire things of beauty, things of adventure, and things that make an impact in these categories. In other words, I need gems. So from now on, you'll see to it that you deliver me at least two emeralds of sapphire with at least 250 million gold pieces every week. <laughs> Failure to do so resulted in unpleasantness. And I never like having to be the difficult superior. It was a shame that. Excuse me, sir. Yes. <laughs> you you noticed to deliver gems and sapphires to you? Yes, twice a week. This is the shakedown. I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, I don't. I this I never have them, so they don't speak back to me. Looks over to the major So! Yes! <laughs> so! Me. We, we have some. We have a per diem. You know, maybe we could do a deal where we provide you with some emeralds and sapphires and you give us some of these fabulous celestial pearls, maybe we can make an arrangement. Well, if there are, I, I desire the ability to rub Mega Prime's flaccid face into the court bottom. Surely, I will have similar people that you so wish to dominate them. I sense a... Well, you know, maybe one or two. We might be cut from the same cloth. Cousin Gerald, I'd like to rub his face in it. Gerald, I've seen that. Yeah, after we did last, last, uh, last May. Yes, that was awful. That does sound very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you're not offering pearls, <laughs> what else might you be able to offer to help me keep Mega Prime uh, below squished? Your house. The servants. <laughs> what at all. Wait, are we offering him or is he offering us? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, we can offer all sorts of interesting services. I mean, we could provide you, as I said, we could provide you with jewels in exchange for some of these celestial pearls. But, uh, yes, I mean, we, could, we have lots of skills that we could offer. But we need the house and the servants. And the submarine. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. It's a, as a sweetener. This lovely mansion. And our driven needs biology lessons. Why are you playing getting zero percent attention and just staring at the major demo this whole time? Very moody. Okay, you want to try rolling again now? Yes. You are intensely. Can I can I try again with a different dice? Yes, with different dice. Does anybody wanna give her a little help? Yes! Don't you keep it now? <laughs> um Nega Prion is a genius of Requiem Sharks. Oh, it is. they yeah. are lemon sharks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, tide pool. How about tide pool? Sure. Tide pool. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, you've 
becomes of a right person. Stories of adventure. Especially after a few drinks. Major <laughs> Double! <laughs> and now I guess you could call her Algae Girl. Algae Girl. She's Algae Girl. There's she's Algae Girl. She's Algae Girl. Algae Girl. Algae over. Yes. So take these down. I believe we're about to be regaled. Who is going first? Uh, oh, this is probably when we should have prepared our story, isn't it? I thought our story we already said it. Yes, we were a bit premature in our story, weren't we? Mm, uh, let's, let's go to a person with unfortunate name who sounds like a cough. I don't think we will. Utka. Utka. Yes. Uh, regale us with a story of adventure. Once upon a time. Uh, <laughs> it was me, my research team, traps in the wilderness looking for rare minerals in Earth. We had been sponsored by the Dorman Hill Society for Mineralogy looking for new materials for armor and weapons. Trapped and struck. I was separated from my team. I never found them again. I survived in this wilderness for 10 days, 10 nights, and 17 years, but <laughs> the 17 years came after the 10 days and 10 nights because I could have been rescued, but I, I just really liked the wilderness. <laughs> this, I, this is how marine biologists are born. We just kind of get lost in the water. <laughs> to this day, I never re regained my love of writing out grant proposals and <laughs> journal articles. And I still have my little biology, but in more wild format. <laughs> That's both car. Thank you for coming. That's awesome. car, would you roll a persuasion check? Should have told me to roll that before. Oh, okay. Um, that was uh, not 14. All right. Do you want to? You want Can anyone from the audience perhaps uh, help me? Anybody know the three types of algae? Uh, red. <laughs> Just like her dress. <laughs> so, uh, there's this thing. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. Can you, can you, you raise your hand for us? No. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. I oh, got that. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Yeah.
wow, it was like Charlotte's Bed. Like, <laughs> that was awesome. All right. I mean, I am impressed. <laughs> as we but I, as the Grand Wazir, still need a robe. Okay. Performance, you said? Performance. Or persuasion, either or. Also, that's probably the sum of the other words you spoke in the graph. Oh, 19. Ooh, all right. So, um, uh, the major domo uh, is a little uncomfortable looking because they're not used to having people speak directly to them, and they keep kind of looking over. But you can see that uh, the Grand Vizier is leaning back and, and has undone one of the orange buttons, sort of, uh, and it shoots off to the side. Uh, and, and they're sort of shifting and getting comfortable and very interesting. Nicks. But what did yeah. Algae Girl think? Oh, do you want to do uh, an insight check for Algae Girl? Can I please? Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. 18. This guy's a soldier. Wow. That's it. That'd be funny. That's the other guy they burned it's a lot lot from <laughs> uh, Algae Girl is. <laughs> I love Dungeons and Dragons. You've got a carefully constructed script, and then suddenly one of your characters gets to call it Alley Girl. <laughs> <laughs> the major domo um, is, is duly impressed, and um, uh, if I can borrow from, uh, from Aquaman, uh, if, if they were above the surface, you could see a tear cry, but under the water, you can't feel the tears. <laughs> By the way, Chris, I watched that last night because of your presentation. And yeah. Did how many people saw my presentation yesterday about the science of Aquaman? Good. Okay, that would be my story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do um, you want to do your story next? I mean, do we, are we ready to explain your embarrassment in high school when I snuck into your bedroom and cut your face off and placed my face on yours? And then you had no idea, and you embarrassed yourself through high school the whole time. Would you like to tell everyone what no. happened? <laughs> let's, let's just, let's just. I'm the best sister in the world. <laughs> you know, she used to, you know, in tieflings with the whole disguise self thing going on. She used to steal my face all the time. All the time. And you know. Particularly with my girlfriends. Oh, that was the best. <laughs> and it was really embarrassing when she actually started dating my, my girlfriend. And then farting all the time. <laughs> oh, no, it was, it was, let's just move on. <laughs> uh, let me tell my story. So, you know that famous bardic saga of <laughs> the man of aqua? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Let me tell you how bad the science is <laughs> in the man of aqua detail. Because man of aqua, he couldn't breathe water. Because you know, water is really viscous. And you know, you just couldn't breathe in and out water fast enough to remove carbon dioxide. Oxygen in water is less than 0.6% oxygen, but oxygen in air is 20%. So in order to breathe water, Aquaman would actually have to inhale and exhale 40 times more frequently than in air. 40, you said? Yes, <laughs> can he? No. Also, that Aquaman with his muscles and his pectorals and his monkeyness, yeah. he is like a 2% okay. body fat. Same here. He <laughs> 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 also has a 1.5% body fat. Yeah. <laughs> Dolphin over there, 18 to 20 percent body fat. And because water removes heat 30 times more effectively than air, and because the ocean waters are very, very cold, Aquaman, man of aqua, spends a lot of time <laughs> in the deep sea where temperatures are only 2 to 4 degrees centigrade. He'd be unconscious in 15 minutes, <laughs> particularly in Iceland. Please, he'd be dead in 90 minutes. <laughs> So, you know, if you wanted to survive in uh, the ocean environment, one needs to have a more Aquaman-like physique. <laughs> <laughs> also, water is highly 
as much air would remove his body waters, his kidneys would shut down. He'd die of hydrate, dehydration in a couple of days. Bats and white whales and dolphins have specialized kidneys like desert animals. And finally, <laughs> man of aqua apparently can swim 3,000 meters per second, <laughs> 6,700 miles per hour, according to Justice League of America number five. I always assumed they were hyperbolic. Now, I can swim 4.7 miles per hour, which is pretty impressive. Indeed. And I've grown up, that Michael Phelps swims that <laughs> um, And I've grown about 1,000 calories per hour. To swim at that speed, man of apple would need to be in 1.4 million calories. And to provide that amount of energy, he'd have to eat 972 kilograms of tuna. <laughs> so a blue whale can ingest 4,500, uh, 457,000 calories. So that's two blue whale meals an hour. And that doesn't even take into account drag from water. The power he needs to overcome drag to swim that, that speed is one terawatt. He'd need to eat one blue whale meal every two milliseconds. <laughs> Man of Aqua, where's your science? <laughs> Who's magic? <laughs> you did more effort for that presentation than I did my thesis defense. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that Mega Prize was a bastard pulling my pin when he told me that Man of Aqua was able to Ha! I have him now. And that's a wig! That's not his real heir! No! no! <laughs> I knew it! So I always suspected those stories were fish tales. Uh... Nobody laughs until he looks at Major Gumbo. And Major Gumbo goes, eh. <laughs> <laughs> So do I get a persuasion roll? You most certainly do. <laughs> Thank goodness persuasion is my best ability. Up. Uh, uh, three. <laughs> so even with my amazing plus nine, that's only a twelve. <laughs> Anybody? I actually don't know if there are any more Easter eggs out there. Make one up quick. <laughs> uh, the ocean. Does <laughs> 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 anyone tell us an amazing fact about Aquaman or Jason Momoa? Or the superhero? Very free! It's a wig, we don't accept that. <laughs> sure. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, that's a bit bad. The 21. Yeah. <laughs> we only needed three successes anyway, so Chris's roles was kind of useless. <laughs> That's all right. Mega um, Priya, there is no. Give him those of those. He leans back, a deadpan expression on their face. The finger twitches. Their eyes close, and they erupt in a huge laugh, sending their pantomimal midsection jiggling, as it were. Oh, splendid, splendid! These will serve me well in the future. Oh, Mega Pryon the Vast certainly will pay well for these stories. Yes, yes, indeed. You've been so munificent in your tales. If you could keep this up, if you could regale me with these adventures, say, on a weekly basis, in an <laughs> hour long format, devise <laughs> a way that I could just. To, to message you somehow through the ether. But just so that I could listen to them directly in my place of comfort and at a time that's convenient to me. So <laughs> maybe we could forward these stories through a pod of orcas. <laughs> Ask these stories <laughs> into the court. If, you know, if, when I'm commuting or doing physical exercise, things like that, that would be most splendid. Oh. Please, Major Domo, see them out, they're well compensated. And with that, he turns his back, and Major Domo, algae girl if you will, stands up and, and ushers you out, CLs in the red and, 
uh, vests and hands loose, come and pick up the benches, even if you're sort of still kind of on them. Uh, mm -hmm. As we go out, I, uh, I um, take one of the elves and ask him how much would the uh, take what waistcoat for? How many, how many custom pieces? Uh, uh, these, these are sort of standard, standard issue. You could probably probably arrange to have a set of up for you because, you know, you're Really? You're an employee now. So. Uh, oh. oh, now we're employees. Oh. I'm not a freelance consultant, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an advisor. <laughs> oh, but yes, if you give me waistcoats, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so. Ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so um, uh, there's there's actually a, a, a tailor comes out uh, with a. Um, Cornet fish. So cornet fish, you've not seen them are these kind of really, really long, skinny, cornet-shaped fish, right, with a, a long protruding mouth. Um, and they get to be about a meter or so uh, long, and they've got these little stripes on them. And so the tailor is using that sort of as a, a ruler to kind of measure, and they start taking the measurements <laughs> for your vest <laughs> and your pantaloons. And, um, and Major Domo's just sort of sitting there. Um, and uh, does anybody else want a uh, <coughs> vest and pantaloon set? They all do. I'm going to need one, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if everyone else is, don't no He okay. just likes okay. to be okay. extra We'll stop. Come on. Well, then. Uh, uh, can I have a staff outfit? Oh, I'll get you a staff outfit. Like, maybe a perfect or something? Yeah, they were talking. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do something. We can write this. Okay. 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 I'm, I'm not having. You don't have to wear this very well, anyway. You can have mine. I don't actually care. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Marit. Marit. Like, oh, uh, like French. Yes. 
Oh, very nice. Um, you never know what we might want to do a little bit of a voyage to the element of pleasant water. I hear it's lovely there at certain times of the year. Mm-hmm. What sort of place do you like? Yeah, the mine is in. Excellent. Well, we will have to work on that in season two of Dugongs and Sea Dragons. Thank you guys very, very much. <laughs> So we have a, if you've been listening to the show, you might have heard that uh, Lucy and Dark has branched out as a romance novelist. So we have Jarmo and Jolene here, and we also have the famous Fifty Shades of Purple. So uh, for the listeners of the podcast, which cast members are we missing? <laughs> Finn. Marmo. Marmo. Well, I think you should have Jarmo and Jolene there. There you go. <laughs> Careful. It's got edges. Yes. Where's <laughs> Bake? <laughs> 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 Some good looking hair. Some good looking hair. <laughs> and uh, oh, another one here. Who illustrated the covers? I know. What you got? <laughs> <laughs> It was me. Okay. <laughs> Thank Very you. Very important question. When you're having a British cream tea with jam and scones, which order do you put the jam? Do you put jam on first or cream on first? Okay, no, this is not me. Put jam on first. Jam on first. No! No! <laughs> no. Don't listen to him! <laughs> I thought we had a, thought we had a thing, a connection. <laughs> uh, the betrayal. I like the hat too much. I'm taking it. <laughs> and uh, what's happening? We have a couple of dice. So what else can we? What else can we ask? What? What? Let's throw it out. First, first hand up. What? <laughs> <laughs> should we feature in season two? Yeah, Kraken. Kraken! That seems fitting. That might be a little conflict of interest in that building. So let's get Kraken. Kraken does. Let's get Kraken. 10% off. We're nearly out of time now, so we have to switch.